it. Okay, so last episode, first of all, welcome. Welcome, everyone, new and old, to Chirpin' from the Pine. My name's Josh, and I'm here today with good buddy Frank. Yo. And while the last episode may have seemed like a Dodgers fucking jack-off fest, this episode is going to be the opposite of that. A, because fuck the Dodgers. And B... I mean, how many times do you say that on the actual time you do with Adam? Uh, well, I said it like a, I said it a few times, but... <laughs> They were going on about stats and all kinds. And listen, that's, that's great. Him and his cousin. He had his cousin on because oh. like, his cousin loves the Dodgers. So I'm like, all right, whatever, man. His cousin played kind of professional baseball. So, uh, oh, I got to turn it back up. Here. No, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm doing the screen saver off. Oh, all right. Uh, so, I mean, it, it was a good episode. I mean, we talked about baseball in general, <laughs> but they were just jerking off about the Dodgers and, and waxing poetically. So, um, obviously... I had the opposite experience of that with the Dodgers. I hate the fucking Dodgers. But before we get into that. I mean, I don't know. Ever since the Angels were on a losing streak, you were, you were talking about becoming a fan. Oh, my God. I was just being an asshole. And if you, you want to hear me be an asshole so. about other things, you can go to GameRageMagazine.com where you can hear all of my podcasts that I'm on that I'm an Dumb asshole. Bitch. No shit. <laughs> you can also go to Game Rage or... At Game Rage Magazine on Instagram and TikTok. At Game Rage Mag Twitter slash X. Game Rage Magazine on YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Frank here. Anime underscore syndicate underscore podcast. And if you're like anime, you should go fucking listen to the Anime Syndicate podcast, you fucking loser. Anyways. Yeah, fucking, I hate the Dodgers. And no, I'm not actually going to betray the Angels. I was just being facetious and I was just fucking saying shit, okay? Yes, am I mad about the Artie Moreno fuckface situation? Yes, I'm mad about it. Am I mad that he fucking had to put Los Angeles in the name of the team when they've never, ever, ever been not only to the city of Los Angeles, but or in Los Angeles fucking county? No, I, yes, I am mad about that. Am I mad because he doesn't seem to give a shit? Am I mad because he wanted to buy the stadium and then he got fucked because of corruption? Because, well, fuck it, they shouldn't have been fucking around like that. No, because fuck him. But I'm mad that now he doesn't give a shit anymore. He can't buy the stadium. He, I feel like that was the end of it for him. You know what you sound like? What? <laughs> that's, that's how I feel. That's how I feel like on the inside. So long story short, our message to Moreno... Your intellect is as weak as your dollar. Failure is your destiny. You disrespect yourself and your nation. You are made of stupid. And just one little side note. Fuck you, you old bitch! <laughs> yeah, uh, I will say I feel that way about our ownership and our <clears throat> essentially upper management in general. I do think bringing Ron Washington on was a great fucking idea. But the problem is, if you're just going to bring on a coach who's going to turn the team, you got to give him something to turn around. You're not giving him shit. You literally didn't give him dick. Hell, Mike Trout hasn't even fucking played this year. Mm -hmm. He's played zero games in 2024. It's looking like he ain't going to pay any. Oh, no, he's out for the rest of the season. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you look at his last four, his second half of his career now that he's essentially on, the last like four seasons, he's played like 80 games in four fucking seasons. Well, you know what to say when you burn the candle at both ends. Yeah. And the the brightest star burns out the quickest or whatever you want to fucking call it, right? That's why Mike Trout's never going to go anywhere else. And the problem is, and I hate to say this, because Mike Trout is the face of the Angels. Mm. He's really the ambassador of Major League Baseball. He's like your cookie cutter good guy. He's like Superman, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody, he's adored throughout the world. He always does the right thing. <laughs> he's never caught up in controversy. Just a genuinely good guy, right? Problem is, now he's not even really fucking playing. <laughs> and he did great. He did great for us the first several years. But now that he's in the second half of his career, what we maybe could have got for him on trade to somewhere else is now nothing. 
We can't trade him. No, it's not going to happen. No one would take him, I don't think. No, even if we, even if they would, we, we can't trade him. I mean, we shouldn't. Mm-hmm. It'd be, it'd be the death knell for mm-hmm. sure. So, I don't know what the situation is to get us out of this fucking predicament. The Angels are going to likely end the year very under five hundred, which mm-hmm. it is what it is. Uh, I will say it's been great because, I mean, I got to go oh to. My- I got to go to an Angels game a couple weeks ago with Katie. And I will say that I've been to several Angels games over the years, and it's very weird how, like, we went to celebrate her mom's birthday. You know, her mom died, what, two and a half years ago now? Mm -hmm. So Saturday the 3rd was her birthday, so we said, oh, hey, let's go and celebrate her birthday because we always go do something, right? We would go to Ruby's, we take Chloe, we go to Ruby's, we get the shakes and the fries like she used to like to get. And then we were Jesus like, Christ. what? At least we're not the worst team in the American League. Oh yeah, that's true. We're definitely not the worst team. We're not the worst team in the... We're, no, we're not. The, the White Sox are the worst team in yeah, baseball. They're the worst team. Jesus Christ. We're not even the worst in our division. Yeah, no, which is, which is crazy. To think that the Oakland A's are, are doing worse than us at mm-hmm. this point. But... I digress. I do also say that we did this, we go, we do this, and this was, for me, this was almost a religious fucking experience. We're playing the Mets. We go, and we get to the stadium. Of course, you know, we do a little pre-gaming in the parking lot because... It's like $1,800 to buy drinks at Angel Stadium, which that's one of the things that does piss me off is for Angel, the Angels being maybe the fourth or fifth worst team in the MLB, they charged like the second highest or maybe even the highest beer prices in the MLB. And we don't even have those fucking baseball uh, glasses. No, we don't, which is terrible. Not baseball glasses, the baseball bat. Oh, they just got those, by okay. the way. I don't think it's a glass, though. It's like a piece of plastic. It's not the good one. It's shit. It's $5 extra. I didn't get one. But if we end up going before the end of the season, we do need to drink out of a fucking plastic baseball bat for five extra dollars. All right. So, I mean, you do get to keep it, so I guess that's fine. But (laughs) anyways, so we go, and we get there. We're pre-gaming, and of course, you know, we go in to find our seats, and we got outfield section 237 front fucking row in right field and it was they were i will say this they were excellent fucking seats for what we paid for them um we go i'm trying to find the seats we end up getting lost and we end up going somehow by like guest relations there's a guy standing outside and so me and katie are decked out in all angel shit right and I got my angel shorts on. I got my jersey. I have an, uh, my angel's undershirt on. I got my hat. I, we had just went to the fucking uh, team store, and I bought that. Uh, I was looking for either a new bucket hat or the Father's Day. Uh, the, the bucket hat, the Father's Day one, or the, um, like the 4th of July one. Um, Look at that one. Huh? Why that one? Well, I, get, I usually get one every year. I get the 4th of July one like every year. Just like I have... Like, every year I go, I always get the 4th of July one. Because usually the design's cool, but this year, the design was basically the same as the one that I got last year. They didn't really change it, so I was just like, eh, I don't want to pay, whatever. I'd rather get the, I wanted to get that, the baby blue Father's Day one. Mm -hmm. It's like the red with the baby blue Angels logo and the Angels on the back. It's fucking cool. It's my favorite hat so far. I love it. So... I get that, and we're walking. I'm in that hat, and Katie's got her fucking angel shirt on. She's got these ripped jean shorts on, and she's wearing (laughs) angels earrings, angels fucking bun thing in her hair. Mm -hmm. And so we roll up, and obviously I'm I'm drunk. So, like, I rock up, and I see this guy wearing, like, the typical. He's got, like, the angels button down, and he's got one of those straw hats. That's like the angels one. And it's like one of those bowler hats. And I'm like, man, that is a cool-ass hat. And I'm like, hey, uh... And then he's like, oh, are you guys lost? And I was like, yes, I'm trying to find this section, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, yeah, you got to go this way and that way. He looks at me, he's like, hey, uh, how would you guys like to go onto the field for the fireworks show afterwards? And I was like, 
fuck, are you talking to me? <laughs> like, yeah, fuck yeah, we would like to go on there. He's like, cool, what's your name? And I was like, oh, I'm Josh, she's Katie, our last name's Bleach. It's cool, he's like, I just need your first name. So, oh, okay, cool. And he fucking has this piece of paper, writes our names on it, and he says, here, he says, take this paper, and he said, when it comes to be the bottom of the eighth inning start, come back here and wait. And someone will be here, and they'll take you down through the end, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, cool. So we go. We're watching the whole game. It's cool. Uh, we end up, we're up, I think it was like 5-4 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And fucking, I swear to God, if a motherfucker doesn't hit a goddamn grand slam in like the sixth inning <laughs> on the Mets to go ahead, basically... Seven five, right, or whatever. So we get to the because we were like, okay, once we get to like the the top of the or the seventh inning stretch, we're gonna go and take a piss and do all that stuff. So that way she we can like go and be ready to go for the eighth, right? Mm -hmm. So bottom of the seventh comes. Man, I was actually in the terrace area. And, but I was still inside the like stadium. And so I could see everything from there. And man, dude, this, this fucking, I forget what the fuck it was, uh, comes up and hits a fucking three run homer <laughs> to fucking put us ahead. Now we're up five to eight. And I'm like, holy shit, we go back to our seats. Fucking, the inning ends, the bottom of the seventh. We sit there for the top of the eighth. And then the top of the eighth ends, they held them. And then we go to the bottom of the eighth. So we go down to the area where they said to meet. And they're like, cool. Once the ninth inning starts, we're going to bring you guys out to, like, the field level. And I'm like, oh, sweet. So they walk us through this whole, f like, we went into the bowels of the stadium, man. It was fucking cool as shit. Like, we're going back to past where they have all the things where people turn their uniforms and shit to have them clean. Mm -hmm. Like, all the staff stuff, like, all this shit, right? And so we go down these stairs, go all out and about and around. And we get into the outfield area where it's the right field. Like, it was, like, right next to our seats, basically. But it's the right field gate that opens up to let you onto the field. Mm -hmm. And it's the big-ass gate. It's where the grounds crew comes out of and everything. So we're there, and the lady's like, oh, the groundskeepers are going to come out. So let them go first, and then we're going to go out. And so we're like, cool. So we, uh, we're there, and... Uh, we got to watch the end of the ninth inning, basically, the bottom or the top of the ninth from field level. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. We got to see the last. They brought in uh, fucking this dude. Goddamn. I'm, I mean, I can't remember anybody's fucking names right now because I'm just like whatever. But they brought in this new dude who like throws 100. Every pitch he threw was 100 fucking miles an hour. He <laughs> threw the fastest pitch in Major League Baseball this season. He threw like a 105 mile an hour fucking pitch or some shit Jeez. like that. And we got to see that, so that was cool. We had to see it from field level, too, which was pretty sweet. So then uh, the inning ends, and then they open the gate, and the ground screw goes through on the carts, and then we fucking walk out. So we walk out on the field, and it's just, like, so cool to see that from field level, right? Because, like, nobody, not a lot of people get to fucking see that view, right? Mm -hmm. And, <clears throat> you know, to be someone who's never seen it at Angel Stadium like that, that's cool. You really don't understand the fucking scale of it. Like, you can think it and you see it, but you, you don't get it. Right. Um, <clears throat> and so you get onto the field. So we're on the first baseline in the outfield area. And so they're like, oh, did you guys want a blanket? Like, oh, hell yeah, we got a free fucking blanket out of it. They came and brought us, like, snacks. They brought us, like, all kinds of shit. And so we watched the whole fireworks show. It was a great fireworks show from field level. It is the coolest fucking thing ever, man. Mm -hmm. Like, that's an experience. And it was crazy, too, because, like, they weren't just handing those out like candy. <laughs> like, there was maybe 15 people on our side, and there was 15 people on the third base side. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And there was a guy that was in there with us who I think he paid for this experience, because he was a Mets fan, mm -hmm. and he was all pissed off that they made him wear this fucking Angels shirt. And I was like, did they give you that shirt? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, that's a sweet-ass fucking shirt. If you don't want it, man, like, I'll fucking take it. Because, like, I, I, it was a nice polo mm -hmm. fucking button Angels shirt. It was like in the team store, it's like a $130 shirt. Yeah. 
And I'm like, dude, this is nice. Like, you should be like, who gives a... Listen, if I went to a Mets game... Now, granted, I wouldn't... If I was a Mets... If I was an Angels fan and went to an Angels-Mets game at, New, at Shea Stadium, I probably wouldn't have paid the $2,000 for the on-field experience because, like, I don't give a fuck. I don't want to go... I mean, now, granted, I like history, so maybe that's a little different. I like history... I'd like to go in and get tours of all the old classic stadiums, you know, Shea Stadium, mm-hmm. even though fuck the Yankees, Yankee Stadium, fucking uh, well, Fenway. Same with the original park. <clears throat> right, but I mean, still, it's still history, right? Like, mm-hmm. Fenway, you know, fucking Wrigley, all those, I'd, that'd be great to go do. So, <clears throat> I, I don't know why this guy fucking even did it, but he was bitching the whole time, and then he was like, ah, rah, rah, and I was like, whatever, go fuck yourself. So then we... As we're done, we thought, oh, this is it. They were taking pictures of us and stuff. It was cool. And then the lady's like, okay, hey, you guys want to go into the dugout? And I was like, oh, hell yeah. You fucking just like, you, yes, 100%. So we go into the first base dugout, which is the visiting dugout, right? Mm-hmm. And I would like to say that I don't know if this is every fucking team, but I feel like it probably is. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. You are all a bunch of disgusting fucking bastards. <laughs> and the level of disrespect, I get it. Seeds are one thing because you're spitting them out. That's I'm not even counting that. And yes, of course, they're fucking everywhere. These assholes are sitting here for two and a half hours just eating a bag of fucking sunflower seeds a piece. It's going to be all over the place. OK, I can forgive that. But the fucking cups and the bottles and the trash and just just shit that's just strewn about. I'm like, man, there's three trash cans in this fucking dugout that are just sitting here. And you mean to tell me that you couldn't get off of your ass and go throw your cup in the trash can? Or like when you took the tape off of your fucking wrists, it's just thrown it upon you. You couldn't just go put it in the trash. Hell, you walk by two trash cans going into the fucking clubhouse. You know what I'm saying? Like, excuse me, Oh, that is that is fucking unacceptable to me, especially to do it in someone else's stadium. I do think it's a dick move to do it to your own people, like to your own grounds crew or whatever you want to, whoever cleans that shit up. It is disrespectful to do that to them. And I don't know what the Angels dugout looked like because I didn't get to go into that one. <laughs> but to see a visiting team disrespect the the, you can't the their, house, you can't expect everyone to be in Japan. It's not even that, man. I just expect you to have a basic level of respect. I mean, you guys are making multi... The the league minimum in MLB is half a fucking million dollars or something like that, right? As a matter of fact... No one in that dugout is making the league minimum. No one on the fucking Mets is making league minimum. Yeah. All right? But... League minimum salary 2024. Oh. League minimum is Mm $740,000 in 2024. So... Basically, everybody's making a million. Fu- you're you're all making a million dollars, over a million dollars, and you want to make the guy who's probably making fucking just a little bit more than minimum wage or whatever, twenty five bucks an hour. You're gonna make him come in and clean up your trash. <clears throat> that's like that's a problem, man. Like that's a problem with baseball in general. Mm-hmm. I think and. You assholes are lucky that you get to do this. <clears throat> and if you, not in the distant past, 40, 50 years ago, dudes had to work regular jobs in the off season. You played professionals baseball. Sorry, I had, and you that, had, to, what? I had that portal effect happen. Oh, yeah. When you're rubbing your eyes. Oh, yeah, yeah. You work a regular job, and then guess what? You got to go work your job as a car dealership, at the car dealership for the other months of the year that you're not playing. Right. <clears throat> you guys don't have to do that shit anymore. And you should at least be a little more respectful. But anyways, the dugout was fucking cool as shit. Uh, I got to, I, I did ask the I was like, hey, listen. Would it be inappropriate if I grabbed the fucking phone, the bullpen phone, and started like, you know, pretending like I was making a call? And he's like, kind of, but he's like, I'll tell you what. He's like, you can't actually open it. We're not allowed to open it and touch the phone. But you can like touch the box or do anything to the box. And I was like, huh. It's like, all right. So I just took a picture. I had Katie take a picture of me putting my hand on the box like I was calling the bullpen. And it's cool because it says bullpen on the thing. Mm-hmm. And it's it's cool. So 
Then we took a bunch of pictures, and then as we're sitting there, the the lady who was like the concierge lady or whatever who took us all out there, me and Katie, we were sitting on the upper bench that's because there's the lower bench and then there's the upper bench right Mm -hmm. so we were sitting on the upper bench that's like right by the you know fence that's on the field and uh we were sitting there and we were taking pictures and she was like oh do you want to like hold the game ball or whatever and i was like oh yeah cool so she tossed us a game used ball took pictures with everything and i went to go toss it back to her she's like no 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 you can keep it. <laughs> yeah, it's not over there. We were the only motherfuckers who got that. There was not a single other person who got a game ball, which was fucking cool. So not only did we get this once-in-a-lifetime experience of going down to the field to watch the fireworks show, but we also got the once-in-a-lifetime experience out of the people who got to do that of getting the actual game ball. So yeah, I got a little fucking... I got a little fucking... What is this? Like a little ball holder for it. Yeah, and this Display case? Yeah, and I think... I kind of feel like I, I I don't know if I should sully it with signatures or if I should like I don't know what to do with it. I know it's going to be in this case, but I don't know if I should just leave it as is. We both know what you can do with it. What am I going to do with it? At some point it's going to go in your ass. I mean, it's already been in my ass, but point proven. Anyways, what else should I do with it? I don't know if I should get signatures on it. I don't know if that's <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Too bad you can't get it authentic- authentic- authenticated to show that it was a game used ball. Yeah, that's true. Because I know you can buy them. Yeah. And it tells you like what play they were used in. Right. Yeah. I have no fucking idea yeah. what this was used for. But. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they did say it was for sure a game used ball, but who the fuck knows? You can't prove it now, though. No, of course not. But it doesn't matter. So at that point, it doesn't matter if you get it signed or not. I guess that's true. I guess that's true. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, it was cool. And then we got to go behind home plate, and I got we got to take pictures. I took, I grabbed a handful of dirt, and I fucking put it in my pocket. And then the lady was like, oh, hey, that's that's going to cost you. And I was like, you tell me who to write the fucking check to. <laughs> and she was just like, oh, all right. And I was just <laughs> like, yeah, I don't give a shit. I will fucking write whatever number you want on here. It'll bounce, but I'll write whatever fucking number you want on there. (laughs) And then we got to go out through the Lexus Diamond Club. And uh, I will say the Lexus Diamond Club is nice. I mean, it's too bad that we're not rich people and we can't be in there all the time, but it is nice. It is right at the field level. Is that the one where you can go in if you have a Lexus or you have to pay to be in there? No, no, you have to. (laughs) No, no, no. You, You just get the parking if you have a Lexus. The Lexus Diamond Club is like you gotta pay to be in there, and you gotta pay like a premium because you're paying, you you pay for the table, and then you're paying like for the each food item that you have to get, and then there's like a fucking I think there's like a like a minimum of money you have to spend. So that'd be cool if we could go do that one day. Mm-hmm. But maybe when Game Rage takes off, we can fucking get. I would still like to get season tickets one year. That'd be fun. Like, get on the season ticket train and then just be able to go to, like, damn near almost every home game if we could. That'd be fucking fun as shit. But, (laughs) you know, one of these years we'll have to do it. Because I was thinking about maybe... I was thinking about maybe next season doing that thing like Brian did where he bought, like, a 20-game pack of tickets. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, kind of like partial season tickets. And then if we did that, maybe we could like, oh, we'll buy like 20. I'll buy three seats and then, you know, me and you and Katie could go. And then like, oh, if sometimes Katie can't go, whatever, me and you, we could take someone else. Or if it's a day you can't go, like, oh, maybe me, well, whatever, me and Katie could just go. But fuck, you know, that, that'd still be cool to do. Yeah. But anyways, this was the exact opposite of the, the experience that I had when I was at Dodger, Dodger Stadium fucking 25 years ago and the reason why I hated the Dodgers. This right here was the reason why I love the Angels to this day. And this is why I will... All this did was just further ingrain my fucking... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they bought your loyalty for another year? No, 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 no. It, it's a... Uh, it's it incre- my fanaticism is through the roof. Mm-hmm. Like now, if not Artie Moreno, because fuck that guy. But if like Ron Washington called me and was like, "Hey man, I need you to go suicide bomb the Dodgers," I'm in. All right, all in, no questions asked. Hey buddy, you tell me what time and what place you want that fucking place to blow up. I'll take care of business. Mm-hmm. My fanaticism level is that high. 
You're so, a zealot now? Yes, I'm an angel zealot. <laughs> like I said, two days ago you weren't, or two days beforehand you weren't. <laughs> no, that's not, well, yeah, you're right, I wasn't a zealot. Or a fan. That's not true, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Well, I mean, that's all I had to kind of say. That was the end of the story. So. Uh, <laughs> what? Moral of the story. Take that, depression! Yeah, basically. <laughs> fuck you, depression, you son of a bitch. At least, at least we won this game. <laughs> I, I thought for sure, I was like, fuck, we're going to lose this fucking game to the Mets. Uh, I think we lost the next day. We lost the series, yes. Yeah. But we won one, the, we, the one game me and Katie went to, we won. Which is pretty alright. So, anyways, you got anything else to add? No. No? Alright, well, uh, that'll be the end of it. So if you want to uh, listen to all our other stuff, you can go to GameRageMagazine.com. We can go to follow us on Instagram and TikTok, at GameRageMag, Twitter slash X. Oh no, it's Twitter slash X, at GameRageMag. Instagram and TikTok at Game Rage Magazine. <laughs> YouTube, 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 Game Rage Magazine. Okay. Anime underscore syndicate underscore podcast. And you can follow Frank. Moving. Also, go listen to the Anime Syndicate podcast. Anyways, that's it for us. Catch you on the next one. was chirping from the pine the game rage sports podcast you can follow us on instagram and tiktok at game rage magazine follow us on x at game rage mag you can go to our website www.gameragemagazine.com